The Mardi Gras crisis continued today in New Orleans. Festivities in the city itself have been canceled because the police are on strike, although some parades are being held in the suburbs. A judge ordered the police back to work, but so far the police have ignored the court order. The big Mardi Gras parades would normally go through the city. This year, because of the police strike, most were moved to the suburbs. Near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, an accident at a nuclear power plant. A spokesman said that a feed water pump broke down this morning, automatically shutting down the three-mile nuclear power plant. Some radiated steam escaped into the atmosphere before the plant could be sealed off, but officials said there is no threat to health. The plant is 10 miles southeast of Harrisburg. Within minutes after notification of the reactor accident at Three Mile Island, the resources of the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission began to deploy to the plant site. Personnel and equipment began to arrive at the site, located on the Susquehanna River, to monitor the reactor and to evaluate the physical and radiation hazards to the surrounding communities. This means it is now considered safe for pregnant Three. women and preschool children to return to their homes within a five-mile radius of the Three Mile Island site. In Britain, truck drivers are expected to end a 27-day long strike. They will get a pay raise of almost 21 percent, and that is far above the government's anti-inflation ceiling. Thursdays after class, we usually go out to eat. Helen would always drink. Later, she would pick her daughter up at school and drive home. One day, there was a terrible accident. Well, what could I have done? If your friend has too much to drink, don't let her drive. Call a cab. Drive her yourself. We've got to start taking care of each other. That's what friends are for. I didn't want to insult her. I didn't... Maintaining peace, or at least an uneasy calm in the world, is the Security Council's raison d'etre and one of the United Nations functions. As a delegate once observed, The Security Council, Mr. President, is the most prestigious and authoritative of the organs of the United Nations. It is endowed by the Charter with the capacity to take mandatory decisions. But our esteem for this body derives not only from the binding character of its authority. We are endeared to the Council because of the... In England, it's all over now except for the concession. The Conservative Party of Margaret Thatcher has won the most seats in Britain's Parliament, and Mrs. Thatcher is apparently to be the first woman Prime Minister in that country, and in all of Europe, for that matter. James Callaghan's Labour government is out. The Tories are in with the first majority government in five years. Margaret Thatcher, nicknamed the Iron Lady, becomes Britain's first woman in the top job. As having an entirely, what you would call a middle-class approach, I call it a fundamentally conservative approach with a small c, because it's founded on belief in the dignity of the human personality. This picture of devastation in an open field a half mile northwest of Chicago's O'Hare Airport is all that remains of the worst aviation accident in U.S. history. A temporary morgue has been set up in an American Airlines hangar. Pathologists, dentists, and a disaster team are working on the grim identification process. But they say that... Salt II signed but never ratified, the embrace broken by the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. A dummy in the front seat of a car going 30 miles an hour. Watch what happens when the car stops. 
Now the dummy's wearing a lap belt. With lap and shoulder belts. See the difference? We thought these films might help you decide what to do the next time you get in your car. Well, we know safety belts are a real headache, but look at it this way. Your headache could be... This information is actually a deliberately distorted or manipulated information that is uh, leaked into the communication system of the opponent with the expectation that it would be accepted as genuine information and uh, influence either the decision-making process, for example, or to influence or manipulate public opinion. La désinformation, ce n'est pas simplement le mensonge. Disinformation is not simply lies or falsifications. It is the art of having your enemies say what you want them to say. This consists in conditioning Western journalists by the USSR in such a way that in perfectly good faith, or sometimes for different reasons, even sometimes financial reasons, these journalists would write what the Soviet Union would like them to write. After which, TASS takes their text and says, you see, even the Western press is saying this. Active measures, and these go even further, consist in making up completely false documents which they try to have distributed as authentic Western documents. Both techniques have enormous importance in the strategy of mental destabilization of the West by the Soviet Union. At the moment, uh, the uh, Soviets are involved in uh, active measures, measures all over the world and practically in any country of the world. Uh, the number of operations uh, which they are running uh, can be counted only in thousands. After an hour and ten minutes, Mr. Carter left the hospital wearing a figure eight harness to keep his shoulders erect and a sling on his left arm. Tonight, the White House said Mr. Carter had fractured his left collarbone and is taking medication for his considerable pain. demolition night a promotional gimmick between games as planned a huge box containing thousands of disco records was blown up yeah! what a real game! the rest was unplanned fans stormed out onto the field in the thousands disco records were hurled like frisbees bonfires were set bottles were thrown the batting cage was torn down and destroyed fist fights broke out White Sox players had to be locked in their clubhouse for their own protection. The melee lasted an hour and a half and resulted in 39 arrests and a few minor injuries. steel with Iraq and was pouring large quantities of the most modern equipment into Iraq. I had already had an arms arrangement with Syria. That is a criticism that is and that one should reflect about. The lack of understanding of the impact of economic change on political changes. 
That is a lesson we ought to learn for the future. No direct contact has ever been had, as far as I know, between the United States government officially and the Ayatollah directly. They were unified only on one negative conclusion, and that was that the Shah had to go. These machines not only verify the number of bills, but also detect any possible counterfeits. Many things can earmark a phony. Weight, color, size, or poor detail in artwork. Once identified, it is cataloged, then sent off to the Secret Service for investigation. Uh, or any American to do, keep out of our country and we will run it ourselves. The time of Bonanza is over. Two relief wells are being drilled to divert the flow of oil and eventually shut it off. One relief well is less than 1,200 feet from its target. Oil officials say if it's successful, the world's biggest oil spill could be over in less than a month, whether the cone works or not. <laughs> Today, President Carter watched the latest broadcast of the Iranian hostages. He made little comment. They are not free, said Mr. Carter, and that is the most important thing. Today's greetings had a somewhat sadder tone than the film released yesterday. I think through the trials and tribulations I'm sure to come, all of us hostages are proud to be Americans. Sixty years of work by the Save the Children Fund. It must have seemed such a simple title in 1919 to our founder, Eglantine Jeb. It was a cry from the heart, which was answered with such enthusiasm and efficiency that in the following 60 years, the fund has never lost sight of the simple basic principles that Miss Jeb instilled to help the children of Eastern Europe after the First World War. Story out of Cincinnati this morning, a bizarre tragedy. 11 people killed when a rock concert crowd went out of control. A huge crowd waiting for general admission seats suddenly surged toward entrance doors, the people elbowing and kicking each other. Many were pushed under and the crowd stampeded over them. Eleven died. The report by... It just went crazy. There was a girl in front of me. She fell down and people were stamping on top of her and everything and I was trying to help her up and they were just hitting everybody and just trying to kill to get into the concert. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Reagan. Good evening. I'm here tonight to announce my intention to seek the Republican nomination for president. You know, someone once said that the difference between an American and any other kind of person is that an American lives in anticipation of the future because he knows it'll be a great place. Other people fear the future as just a repetition of the And tragically, as the cost of living keeps going up, the standard of living, which has been our great pride, keeps going down. The people have not created this disaster in our economy. The federal government has. It has overspent, overestimated, and overregulated. It has failed to deliver services within the revenue it should be allowed. As president, I would use every power at my command to make the federal establishment respond to the will and the collective wishes of the people. We must force the entire federal bureaucracy to live in the real world of reduced spending, streamlined function, and accountability.
cannot and will not stand by while inflation and joblessness destroy the dignity of During a time when the Soviet Union may enjoy nuclear superiority over this country, we must never waver in our commitment to our allies, nor accept any negotiation which is not clearly in the national interest. We must judge carefully, though we should leave no initiative untried in our pursuit of peace, we must be clear-voiced in our resolve to resist any unpeaceful act wherever it may occur. Negotiation with the Soviet Union must never become appeasement. If the auto industry can't do it, government researchers will. The Department of Transportation today unveiled what it is calling the safety car. It says it hopes it uh, will all be driving it in the 1980s. DOT says the car gets more than 30 miles to a gallon of gas and is safe in a crash at speeds up to 50 miles an hour. A mid-sized prototype car developed for the U.S. Department of Transportation. It averages 32 miles a gallon, can take a head-on crash at 50 miles an hour without injury to the occupants, and can be produced for less than $6,000. Uh, you've got a uh, great demand now for fuel economy cars. And so we're saying to them fuel economy will sell. They've always doubted that before. Uh, now with the shifts that are occurring, it will sell. I think they will build them. And the technology in this vehicle is not technology that is impossible at all. It can be done. And I'm hopeful that by 1985 to 1990, it will be. Americans were driving cars as safe and fuel efficient as this one. Traffic deaths could be cut in half, and the country could almost eliminate its need for imported oil. Meanwhile, the Soviets not only ignored President Carter's withdrawal deadline yesterday, their invasion force is said to be growing. The U.S. Olympic Committee is going to go ahead and pick a Summer Olympics team, whether the team goes to Moscow for the Games or not, and it looks like Americans will not be going. I'd rather boycott the Olympics today than have to go to war against the Soviets tomorrow. As they rejected Mr. Carter's call for boycott, the 16 Olympic Committees also rejected an American and British proposal calling for a series of alternate games. As you know, there is a big debate boiling up around the country. Should we, should we not boycott the Moscow Olympics because of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan? President Carter's tough line against the Soviets in his State of the Union speech produced a lot of news today. The Russians talked of a return to the Cold War. It's not enough for you to be a kind of protester to the Russian invasion of Afghanistan. No, I, I f I've always felt that uh, politics should Political things should be keep, kept out of sports, and uh, I was very disappointed when they didn't this time. told all along that this operation was not likely to succeed. Therefore, we were led to believe it would not occur. Uh, I think if they had talked with us, we would have consulted and advised them, as I did this weekend at a conference, not to undertake this kind of an operation because of the high risk involved and the risk of failure, which would be calamitous to us. At Arlington National Cemetery today, three American Air Force men who died on that raid were buried with full honors. 